Hey the kid and we back with another video as you can see by that title we reacting to the final 48 hours of King Vaughn Um one of the hottest rappers and the, the hottest rapper well can't say the no because he's dead but one of the, the used to be well I, I don't know the hottest rappers in Chicago um, was sadly killed I I'm I not remember what day but it's I think it's I'm pretty sure it's gonna tell us and stuff so we finna not do too much talking. We're gonna send regards to him, his family, and everybody else. And um just go ahead and get into the video. On November 6, 2020, King Vaughn would be one of five people shot outside Monica Hookah Lounge in Atlanta. Shots fired at uh Sheik and Monaco. Around 3:20 a.m., two groups of men began arguing outside, leading to gunfire. Two off-duty police officers were working security at the establishment that night, and they too engaged in the shootout. Because of this, a full investigation was conducted to see whether or not the Atlanta Police Department was involved in his death. Here's what they found retracing his steps for those last 48 hours. Vaughn, look, I break down the wood, I stuff it with Pat, I drop me a phone, I'm pouring up. On November 4, 2020, King Vaughn was in Atlanta, Georgia. He was celebrating the release of his Welcome to Oblock album that dropped just a few days prior. His career One of the best albums out in the world. I'm not hearing it was peaking and every day his music was being discovered by a new audience. There's no question he was about to be a superstar, but the biggest issue Vaughn faced at that time was himself. See, King Vaughn was from the infamous housing projects of Parkway Gardens on the south side of Chicago. Before ever stepping into a booth, he was already very active in the street life. He only decided to rap after beating a murder case in 2017. His reputation only made his music more real for listeners, leading to his blow up just one year after that. But it's important to realize when someone lives a life the way Vaughn did before fame, it can be hard to leave that mentality behind. Even, even Man, I bet that nigga Vaughn was a menace. Look at this picture. This look this nigga look my age. Nigga look no more than 15, 16. That nigga was handling business like grown like a grown man, bro. I mean this street shit is no game. It's not fun and games, bro. Y'all think this shit cool, bro. Y'all think everybody wanna be in the gang and shit. It's not, it's not funny games being the game, my boy. Yo, I'm telling you, it's not, man. It's, it's that real man shit. You got, you got, you got to be really, you do the crime, you got to be able to pay the time and handle your consequences out of that, man. Ain't no leaving it. So it's going to come back and haunt you, that's for sure. After finding a way out through music, because of this, Vaughn had no issue when it came to things like beefing with other rappers. While in Atlanta, an ongoing issue between King Vaughn and rapper NBA Youngboy had been brewing for months. On November 4th, DJ Academics would invite Vaughn onto his podcast to publicly speak about their issues. During the conversation, Vaughn assured his fans that there was no real problem, and it was the internet just trying to make it more than what it was, unknowing at the time that in under 48 hours, this would all come to an end. What? Ain't no rap beef, and it ain't no real beef unless somebody you, got shot or something, or unless you know somebody- People told me, people told me well, you and Youngboy was beefing or something like that. Not that, said that, about, that Yo, what happened, Vaughn? What's going on with you, man? <laughs> They be saying that a lot. It's like we got the same interests and in, in, in holes. And then, you know how the internet will try to make it. Don't tell me y'all got problems over girls. No, it's the internet, gang. It's the, it's the you know? You know. One thing, I'm going to tell y'all, fellas. One thing, never stress over, unless that female is your wife or, or that be like your girlfriend. Like that, she the, I don't want to even say the mother of your kid. Unless y'all are like together for like over five years. So you like, you know, you know, no, she going, she the one and shit. Do not stress over no female, bro, because that's dumb. If the girl want to be a hoe and shit, just let her go. There's other females out there, bro. It's going to hurt. Trust me, it's going to hurt. You feel me? It gonna, it's going to hurt to find out your girl a hoe. But, bro, it's not worth dying for. Unless it's like your wife or something, like some man I just can't even disrespect your wife and so shit. Don't let that shit slide. But if your wife, like, or your girl, or your shorty got something, nah, that's lame as hell, bro. Fighting over a girl is stupid, but especially these females nowadays. That's all they want to see. They they try to play both sides. You know what I'm saying? That's dumb. No, don't do that. They try to make it like that because it's the internet. These issues have been escalating since a few months before, when pictures of King Von and NBA Youngboy's ex-girlfriend surfaced online. From that point forward, the two rappers made it known they didn't like each other through a series of social media posts. With two artists this large going back and forth, it was only a matter of time before others got involved as well. One of those people would be Quando Rondo, an artist and friend of NBA Youngboy. Even though Vaughn and Quando were cool at one point, now they weren't. And it just so happens Quando's from Savannah, Georgia, only a four hour drive from Atlanta. I'm saying though, 63rd, dirty ass. Oh, no. 
<laughs> On November 5th, King Von woke up and gathered his entourage. This included himself, his manager, and 20-some others. Around 11 p.m., just five hours before his passing, they headed out to Opium Nightclub. Vaughn was set to make an appearance and promote his new project. He hopped into his bulletproof Hellcat, followed by eight other cars filled with friends and associates. A bulletproof Hellcat is crazy. But that's smart though. Cause rappers nowadays wanna get changed before they get bulletproof cars. No. If I, like you say, if I was ever become a rapper or anything, of, like you say YouTube blow up. I'm getting me a bulletproof car before I get, cause I know, I, no, I got beef now. So I know that, that my, my, I already know shit, shit gonna blow up later. Especially niggas I got beef with now. But that's not the point. Always, like, niggas wanna get changed before they get house. That don't make sense. Get a house first. Maybe, maybe get a house first, then a bulletproof car, then all that. Cause a house is what you need to live in. To change all these accessories and stuff, man. You can get that later at another time. You know what I'm saying? Like, a chain is a chain, bro. Chain's always gonna be there, you feel me? But this stuff, this stuff gonna keep you alive. Bulletproof car, motherfucker gonna keep your ass alive. Yo, motherfucker busting at your ass, you not gonna die. <laughs> you feel me? Vaughn was smart as hell. Around midnight, they arrived. By this time, his manager was taking notice that something was off with Vaughn that night. He couldn't put his finger on it, but he felt like he wasn't himself. Almost like he knew. They stayed at Opium for a few hours where everyone appeared to be enjoying themselves. Fans would upload videos online of Vaughn in the club and from the looks of it, everything seemed normal. But these would be the last videos of King Vaughn smiling we would see. Hey, you know, it's all love for this tee up shit. I, I done dropped that on that woke and woke like the going crazy. I don't want to think about even what the going on. Around 2 a.m., just two hours before his time of death, he gathered his crew and they left the venue. According to his manager, everybody thought they were headed back to the Airbnb. But somewhere on their way home, they lost track of Vaughn's car. After realizing they lost him, they began calling his phone to see. But how you lose track of a Hellcat, bro? A bulletproof, that be with blue. A bulletproof Hellcat, if that. How you lose track of a Hellcat, bro? Come on, bro. It's not too many. What is this? They was in Chicago, Atlanta. Not too many niggas riding around in a bulletproof Hellcat, bro. Bit was a schedule. This color blue, sky blue, with a yellow on it, but you don't lose track of that, bro. Nah, but you don't lose track of that, bro. So I'm not saying too right, bro. You don't lose track of that, bro. I don't know, bro. I don't Where he went, as it was very unlike him to leave without saying anything. So already, confusions were already started. Because normally, if we got an after party or we got anything we're going to, we know as a team. Everybody know to be on point. You know what I'm saying? We're traveling with a real deal, gangster, a real stepper. So everybody going to know how to move. But from that night, I don't know what it was. Maybe it's got timing. I don't know what it was, but Vaughn completely went on his own course. His manager and more importantly, his security went with him everywhere. After calling, they found out he rerouted to an after hours hookah lounge across town. A little before 3 a.m., Vaughn pulled up to Monaco, but decided to wait in his car while the rest of his entourage was still on their way. About 15 minutes went by, Vaughn still in his bulletproof vehicle staying warm. His manager, followed by six other cars, pulled up to the parking lot. He hopped in the car with Vaughn and once again he said he felt like he wasn't himself. They stayed in there while the rest of his entourage was wondering what was going on. It was a cold night, so they too decided to wait in their cars. After a few minutes of talking, his manager convinced Vaughn it was time to go inside. He let his security team know he was ready to enter, so they did their normal checkup. Around 3.15 a.m., security went into the club and checked it out to make sure it was clear of any threats. With Vaughn being a high-profile rapper, this was a standard procedure for them before entering any venue. They couldn't bring weapons in the club, so security left them in their cars. Right as they were about to walk in, one of Vaughn's friends alerted him that Quando Rondo was in a car just a few feet away. It's unknown if Vaughn got a tip from someone that night about Quando being at the club, or if it was just a coincidence that he rerouted his car to the exact location they would both be at. It's possible it just happened like that, but this could have also been the reason Vaughn seemed Get 50% off all Domino's online oh pizza orders God, at menu bro. price this week only, which includes right now. New Goldfish Megabytes, the bigger, bolder, cheesier Goldfish Reboot. Off. Maybe he knew something no one else did. By now, nah, bro. If he was in Chicago, he got a tip, because that's his hood. That, that's his state. 
I'm pretty sure nothing go by without that nigga knowing. If he was in Atlanta, I don't know. Cause I was, nah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, my boy, don't know. Normally Vaughn was calm, collective, and soft-spoken. Living the life he lived back in Chicago, he knew how to handle these situations. But on this night, Vaughn reacted before anyone could say or do anything. He immediately hopped out of his vehicle, jewelry on and all, not knowing if Quando was alone or if he too had people with him. Only a few moments later, the two would come face to face and just like Vaughn spoke about before, it was on sight. He threw punches at Quando even before words could be exchanged. Others rushed over as the fight broke out. What Vaughn didn't know was the white vehicle Quando was standing next to had people from his crew inside. At 3.20 a.m., only a few seconds after the fight had started, a gunshot from only a few feet away went off, striking Vaughn in his side and catching him completely off guard. You can see the gunman, who we now know as Lil Tim, coming out from behind the car and firing multiple shots. Vaughn got hit three to four times and his manager was also hit in the leg. The two off-duty police officers working security that night reacted immediately and they too fired shots into the crowd. But we can confirm now the shots that injured Vaughn came from Quando's side and not the police officers. The police would hit three people in total, one of them being Lil Tim. Vaughn laid in the street holding on to Quano until Muop, one of Vaughn's good friends, broke up the fight. At 3.23 a.m., there were injuries on both sides. Instead of waiting for ambulances, their crews drugged their wounded into cars and sped off to the emergency room. According to those in the vehicle with Vaughn, he was still conscious throughout the ride, even telling one of his friends to calm down that he was going to be okay. Around 3.32 a.m., just moments apart from each other, both crews would arrive at Grady Hospital, which was less than 10 minutes away. Quano would start a live stream of himself helping Lil Tim inside the building to try and protect himself in case Vaughn's people ran up on him. Come on, come on, come on, he shot! It. Come on, come on, bit bro, you got this shit, dog! Come on, cuz, just keep breathing, bit bro. Just keep breathing, cuz. But this wouldn't happen, and nobody else was hurt after the initial conflict at the lounge. Unfortunately though, just after 4 a.m., King Vaughn along with two others who were shot that night would pass away to their wounds, taking his life and career far too soon. Lil Tim was arrested in Grady Hospital where he was treated for his wounds before being taken into custody. He posted bail the same day and has since been awaiting trial for the murder of King Vaughn. Somebody kill somebody, everybody got family, somebody relate to him or somebody cool with him, you kill him, now everybody that, that he was close with is trying to kill you, it, it's a never ending, or they gonna kill, let's kill somebody close to him. It, it don't yeah, stop it. to everybody, all the people that playing the game, it's gone, you see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. so it's the last man standing, it's either you gonna be in jail, you gonna die. Man, bro. That's a piece of King Vaughn, bro. We, we, he died too early, bro. He gone too early, bro. Another great talent that we lost, bro. Over some, I want to say stupid stuff, but over some street beef, bro. Man, man, if this come out, bro, over a girl, bro, this is stupid, bro. I'm not going to hold you. But let's say this show you, bro. That nigga King Vaughn like that, my boy. He ain't getting no care about nothing. My boy walked on with Jovi on everything. Yo, put the fuck out of that nigga. Is it? It felt like a out of body experience. Man. Now, let me chill out. Let me chill out. But now, you know what I'm saying? That's crazy. I ain't really sit down. I told you. That's crazy, bro. That's crazy, bro. Man, rest in peace, King Vaughn. We sent our condolences to all his people. Man, I ain't even know that, my boy. Hey, yo. But anyway. That's all for the video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, follow my nigga on the side. Yeah. This this ain't this ain't gonna be over, bro. This ain't yeah, this not gonna be over, bro. Oh, so I wonder why is Lil Tim? Why is it why they waited so long to prosecute that nigga? That he did it. Nigga, nigga did it. <laughs> he been saying he did it. I mean that nigga should be in jail. I'm not gonna that nigga should be in jail by now. Man, I don't know, so bro. Like a fool, you get man, that's it, man. Ain't JD kid. Man. Man. Too hard to lead. Her head ain't the best. What you wanna do, little nigga? Got a whole lot of whole lot of money. Some shooters gonna shoot. Pull up with my two little niggas. Hop out, chasing niggas like duck, duck, goose, little nigga. 90X.